Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss parallel lines. Now when we're doing parallel lines, there are three main types. The first one is what you call F. Now when you're looking at your F, the two lines that are parallel, if you just take under the line and you take under the line, then those values are equal. But now remember, it needs to be under and they both have to be on the same side there. So they are both on the right hand side. If I had continued this parallel line and I said this one here is equal to this one. But notice they now both on the left hand side. So when we're doing parallel lines, the first one is corresponding. This is the name of it, corresponding angles. You don't say it makes an F, it looks like an F. You need to say corresponding angles. And then it is a good habit to start saying which parallel line is parallel to which. So in this case, we're specifically working with AB and CD. Now remember, they either on the right hand side, so both on the right, and both would be at the bottom of the line. Or both would be on the left, and both would be at the bottom of the line. If you were taking, let's take a similar drawing. But I'm now working with this one. Can you notice it's on top of the parallel line? So I need to take the one that's on top of the parallel line. So if they both on top, if one is on top, then the second one has to also be on top. And then notice, left, left. So that's the rule with the corresponding angles. Both are either on top, both are either bottom, both are on the left, left, both are on the right. But no mixed up. No one is on top, one is at the bottom. Doesn't work. When we're doing corresponding angles, the angles are equal to each other. So x is equal to x. Or here we can have a is equal to a. Here also x is equal to x. The angles are equal to each other. The next thing we have is the u. Now u, what you notice is that they are both touching the parallel lines. Okay, but also between the two, there is no space. There is no space. Now that's important because if I have something like this, I can say this one, but not this because there's a line between it. There's like a gap between it. So with co-interior, you know that the two are like linked to each other. Now this one here, x plus y is equal to 180 degrees. The reason is co-interior angles. Now be careful, they are not equal like all the other parallel lines. These ones add up to 180 degrees. Again, it's a good idea to write down which parallel lines are we talking of. AB is parallel to CD. The last one is your N, what you would know as your Z. Now the N or the Z, you must remember, it's in the arms. So if you look at like the V's that it produces, okay, but not always that, sometimes they very straight. So it's not always a V, but if you look here, look, this is also making like a V here. Can you see it? And here. So what we're looking for is we're basically in the arms of the alphabet or in the V of the alphabet. And in this case, we also have that they are equal. So x is equal to x. These are called alternate angles. Remember, nowhere in the geometry can you say, oh, it forms a u, oh, it forms an f, oh, it forms an n, oh, it forms a z. That is incorrect. No mark allocation is given for that. So if you want to do good, you need to know the valid reasons. Again, which parallel lines am I talking about? A, B is parallel to C, D. Let's do examples now. If you look at this one, if you can see, how would I find x? Now, if I got that this is 120 degrees, so there's many different ways that I can use to solve for x and y. Like number one, I can say y is equal to 120 degrees, vertically opposite. Remember, you make a statement, you have to give a reason. Then, you see, even though they're showing me here that it's parallel, the rule is that it follows right through the entire line. 
which means that this line is parallel to this line. AB is parallel to CD. Now what do I know about X plus Y? X plus Y will equal to 180 degrees because they are making co-interior angles. They are making co-interior angles. So I have Right. What does that mean? If I got that y is equal to 120 degrees, it's a matter of solving for x. So x is equal to 60 degrees. Now let us do another one. Let's say I want to solve for p. And then I'm telling you line jk is parallel to lm. Look at what we have here. Can you see? Here's your v like. And here's your V. So I can say P is equal to 120 degrees. Why? Alternate angles. And you can tell me that JK is parallel to LM. Now this part is not really marked. There's not really a mark allocation for it. But they are getting more strict with the geometry. They're trying to see if we know little things. So you rather start these things and um, get good habits so if they do start implementing this then we know hey, we already used to it you know okay let's take another example this one here what kind of style is this that's my parallel line they on top and they both on the right hand side so I can say x is equal to 50 degrees and my reason is corresponding angles. Now in here you can also see a Z if need be. But there's a Z there. Alright. You can also see the co-interior. So you must remember with parallel lines you can do so much. There's so many options, right? Let's look at this one. This one here. What do we have here? We have that y plus 60 is equal to 180 degrees and the reason is co-interior angles. That would mean y is equal to 120 degrees. Then I can get immediately the value of x. x is going to equal to 120 degrees, reason vertically opposite. Okay. Last example. If you look, where's my parallel line? If I got that, I can immediately see that here's a Z. So I can see my D is going to equal to C. Why is my D going to equal to C? Because they are making alternate angles. Which means angle C is equal to 20 degrees. If I look here, I have vertically opposite. So my F1 is going to equal to 50 degrees. Why? Vertically opposite. Every time you make a statement, you have to give a reason. So what do I have? I have that that's 50 and I have that that's 20. Now look, we have sum of angles of a triangle. If you take in this triangle here, x plus 50 plus 20 is equal to 180 degrees. My reason is sum of angles of a triangle. So that means x is equal to 110 degrees. But if x is equal to 110 degrees, then we have a z this way. Can you see it? So x is equal to y. x is equal to y. Reason, alternate angles. You have to give a reason. If you don't give a reason, you're going to get it wrong. So x is equal to y which means y is equal to 110 degrees. Now these shapes here or these drawings that look like a lot of triangles in each other they become very handy in grade 12 because this is where we start getting similar triangles and from similar we get ratio and the entire grade 12 syllabus is based on these ratios. Let us go back to the triangles equation. If you look at this we were trying to figure out what is 2q plus 10. Now if this is a parallel line. Then look at the z that it's forming. 
So what can I say about this P and this 2Q plus 10? P is going to equal to 2Q plus 10. Why? They are forming alternate angles. Now if I have that P is 80 degrees, then I can solve for Q. If I take it over, I got 80 minus 10, which is 70 degrees. That then I divide by 2. Remember, this is all your solve for x rules. So if you're not familiar with this, you need to go back to that section. So I have Q is equal to 35 degrees. Now if Q is equal to 35 degrees, then C4 is going to equal to 2 times 35 degrees plus my 10 degrees, which is equal to 80 degrees. That is normal substitution. What would C1 equal to? C1 plus C4 is going to equal to 180 degrees. Why? Adjacent, supplementary. That means I've got C1 plus 80 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. That means C4 is equal to 100 degrees. That is why you need to know all your rules. Some of the rules are very dependent on the other rules. Without them, we can't complete the riders. Thank you for watching.